RAM is an essential part of the computer. That is why I've always wondered how much of it you need to do stuff, like play a game for example. Some will say that with 16GB it is enough, others will say you need 32 to be safe. But what if I told you this footage of Alan Wake we have been seeing for a while was running with only 8GB of it? As you can see, RAM is not that easy to understand. That is why in this video we will try and answer the question of how much RAM we need for gaming. So let's start with the benchmarks. In this video we will be testing two kits of RAM, both from the same brand and with almost the same specs. The only difference will be the capacity and density of the modules. To get the three capacities we will be using one 8GB module from the 16GB kit for that test and the other two kits for the 16 and 32GB tests. And the system we will be testing them on will be my usual test bench, paired with an RTX 3070 as the graphics card. As you can see, all these specs are here. For the games we'll be testing, I've made a selection of different titles at different quality settings. Some of them, like Cyberpunk 2077, tested with different quality presets to see how those affect performance in real-world scenarios. The testing procedures are that each benchmark consists of three runs at those settings, and the results you see are the average from those runs. So let's go now with the benchmarks, starting with Cyberpunk 2077 running at the lowest quality preset. In this test, we can clearly see the difference between the RAM configurations, with a difference around 12% between the 8GB and 16 configuration, while having a bigger 20% difference going all the way up to 32GB of memory. If we change to the ultra quality preset though, we can see the situation changes a lot. Now the differences between 8GB and 16GB is bigger, but at the same time the 16 and 32 ones are a lot closer. What is interesting to see here is the change in 1% lows that indicate the stability. As we go up in size, the 1% lows are a lot closer to the average frame rate, meaning we have a more stable configuration. Lastly, if we look at the RAM usage, we will see that it is lower with only 8GB of RAM, probably the reason why the 1% lows are lower. So it seems that in this test, the 8GB system is playable. But what happens when we start to move around? To see that, I did this test to see how it went and surprisingly enough it all seemed to go well. Apart from the difference in frame rate, the 8GB version seemed perfectly playable. Well, at least until it crashed after 2 minutes of running around, so I would not recommend to play like that. Next we have Metro Exodus. Here the story is completely different from Cyberpunk, with the 16GB and the 32GB neck and neck with minor differences. This situation will be the most common one with this test, but usually the 32GB configuration will be a little bit better, especially with the 1% lows. About the 8GB here is not that far behind from the other two which is surprising at a lower graphical configuration. I guess it depends on each game and how much it taxes the CPU. Now Alan Wake 2, this game is really demanding and it requires 12GB of RAM, but as we can see here it runs with less and not bad at all. The only thing is that with less RAM we can see that the GPU is not being completely used on the 8GB system, having bigger and more frequent drops in usage at the lower preset, where the GPU is not the bottleneck. We can also see that the 16GB system is doing better than the 32GB one, this is a really small difference, but later on I will be explaining why this might be happening. Red Dead Redemption is another great example to see the difference between configurations. Here with the big CPU bottleneck, we can see that the GPU and RAM usage vary greatly between systems. This means that even if it is smooth, we are going to lose performance with less RAM. This can be seen for example on the GPU power usage being 20 watts less on the 8GB system. This is perfectly reflected on the results we get with a massive 18% difference on the average frame rate and 26% difference on the 1% lows between the 8 and 32GB configurations. It's true 
This is at the lowest graphical settings, so when the GPU becomes the bottleneck, the differences should be smaller. Forza Horizon 5 is another game I've tested at two different quality settings. In this lower one we get really high FPS, where the lack of RAM is accentuated as it limits the GPU performance, exactly as the 8GB system shows. If we go to the other side of the scale in terms of quality, the differences get narrower as the bottleneck is on the graphics card now. This means that the 8GB configuration is now a lot closer and that the other two are barely distinguishable. But where we can see a clear difference is again on the 1% lows, where having less RAM is worse for the metric. Horizon Zero Dawn is an interesting title because of the differences in performance we get. Despite having almost 3.5GB of memory usage between the 8 and 32GB systems, here the differences are much smaller than on other titles where that happened, like Red Dead for instance. In fact, I would bet that on higher graphical settings the differences would be almost indistinguishable without the metrics. If in Horizon Zero Dawn the difference with RAM usage was big, here it's even bigger, and with even less effect on the performance. If we look at the CPU in the 8GB system we can see it is using more power than the other two, probably compensating for the lack of RAM and having to access it more to refresh its data. We will talk about this more in depth later on to see why the 8GB system is working that well on these tests. Despite the huge gap, the differences in performance are really low, with differences of a couple percentages if we take the average of the runs. Finally, the last test we have is in Returnal with the lowest preset. Again, the differences are really small with no apparent bottlenecks across the systems and a really similar performance, especially between the 16 and 32 gigabyte systems. So note that we have all the data from the test, let's analyze it and see the overall differences between the configurations. Before continuing, I would like to quickly ask you to pause the video for a second and subscribe to my channel if you are not already. It takes a lot of effort to make these videos and it would really help me. Now if we go take a look at the overall results, we will see that the bigger difference lays between the 8GB and 16GB configurations, and the 16 and 32GB ones are closer, but we have to take into account that between these last two, there were games where they were equal and others with a bigger difference, so averaging the results like this will hide that. Another thing to note are the 1% lows. This metric indicates stability, so the closer it is to the average value, the more stable the frame rate is. As we can see here, with fewer RAM, the 1% lows take a big hit. But if we separate the results between the high quality settings and the lower ones, the picture changes. Because now we can see that in the situations where the GPU is the bottleneck, the effect of having more or less RAM is reduced. So now that we have gone over the results, let's go into analyzing other things that happened during the test. Starting with the memory usage that, if we remember, it had an interesting behavior on the benchmarks. To start we see that on the 8GB system it is using a lot less RAM than on the other ones. But why is it not using all the 8GB of RAM if it needs more? The reason is how Windows manages the memory because in fact it is using the whole capacity. So let's explain what is happening there. This is the RAM of my main computer. On top we can see a graph showing the usage but just beneath that we can see a graph that shows what the different parts of the memory are doing. If we look at that graph, this section here represents the memory being used, while this other one here is the free memory ready to be used. So what is the rest of the memory doing? The rest is memory that is being used but not as much to be counted as used memory. It's usually data that is entering and exiting the RAM all the time, or cached data that is not as important but that the CPU still needs access to. That is why, despite it not being counted as memory in use, it is still allocated and storing information that is helping the operative system work and be able to do tasks such as accessing information in the storage drives. Finally, that small fragment of memory we had left is data waiting to be written on the disk. What is happening in the games is that the memory difference between the one being used and the total is just cached memory. On top of that, 
we can see Windows is using 17 GB out of 25. What is happening here is that Windows is using the hard drives as extra RAM in order to be able to run the game. This of course will affect the performance because an SSD is a lot slower than regular memory. But at least it can work like this and if it is not a really demanding task it won't crash. So then, how much RAM do we need? Well, to start we can basically rule out the 8GB option. This is not only because it will bottleneck our system, but also because even if the game is smooth, it may crash anytime. Maybe for low-end systems only playing League of Legends or indie games it might work, but for an all-round gaming PC, it just won't. So it's 16 or 32 gigabytes then. The differences in performance are small between those, and both will work perfectly fine in most situations. In some cases, the 16GB system will lose a little bit of performance, but it's nothing too serious in most cases. So, how do we choose between them? At this point, we have to look at specific cases to decide. For example, 16GB will be good for playing while in Discord and having a couple of browser tabs open. But if while gaming we are streaming, doing game capture, or having a lot of background processes running, then maybe it is better to make the jump to 32GB, as memory intensive games could be affected by it. Another thing to consider are specific games and situations in them. For example, there are games that will be better with 32GB of RAM, like simulation titles like City Skylines, Flight Simulator or other similar games that have a big CPU impact. Also, if we are playing with mods, having 32 gigabytes or even more will be a necessity. Mods are not usually built with optimization in mind, and in games like Minecraft or Skyrim where big mod lists are common, we could easily run into problems. So summing up, I would personally go with 16 gigabytes for general gaming and 32 gigabytes if you have a high-end system and want to be able to play everything in all situations and squeeze that last drop of performance out of your parts. So I think that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you like it and want to see more tech content. I usually post benchmarks on this channel but I want to make more videos like this one, so I'll be grateful if you could give me some feedback to improve. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you around.